the mama and the love that she gave. Kneeling by her bedside, I can still hear mama say, The people are depending on you, Shirley. Don't you let them down. In a happy way We went to school With holes in our shoes We didn't have much But the Lord saw us through church playing with God. Men and there, we went outdoors, we started playing church. Sat down on the bottom step. My brother was a preacher and we were the members in the church and he put some old glasses and put them right here on his nose and he said, I, he said, I want you to jump up and shout Jesus three times. And I jumped up and I shouted Jesus two times but when I jumped up the third time, something got a hold of me. I couldn't sit back there. 
is your mama. So Shirley Ann is out there playing with the Lord. Mama came to the door. And she looked out there and saw me shouting and dancing all over the backyard, tears running down my face. It's just a life. Huh? Mama looked out there and she said, she ain't playing this time.
He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For we brought nothing out, we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us all together repeat the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. Maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me inside the still water. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me a path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff may comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our opening hymn, our great door. O Lord my God, when I
Get the rubber to clean when they'll come and say the whole thing to us. Get the rubber to clean. Mighty God, our Redeemer, our hiding place, the one who will live and move and have our being. Father, just give us thanks for this day. Thank you, O oh Lord, for keeping us alive. Thank you for your mercy, your strength. Lord, just we honor you today in a wonderful way. We bow before you and we humble ourselves before you. Lord Jesus, I pray, O oh God, that you take this service in your hands, O oh God. I pray for your leading. I pray for your direction. Lord, just let everything be decent and in order. Lord, as we are about, O oh God, to begin our service, O oh God, we offer for the remaining of our related sister. Lord Jesus, we put her her soul in her hands, O oh God. Oh, great God. I pray, O oh God, that her soul may rest in peace. Lord Jesus, direct us today in a special way, Lord Jesus. Have mercy upon us, O oh God. Touch us, O oh God. Send a word, Lord Jesus. A word for someone, O oh God. To know that, O oh God. And see today what they don't know about tomorrow. Lord, we honor you. And we give us thanks, O oh God, for what you're about to do. Thank you, O oh God. I put the moderator in your hands, O oh God. Direct our Lord Jesus. I put our preacher, O oh God, our pastor, Lord Jesus. Give him a word, O oh God, a word of encouragement, word. A word, O oh God, that breaks someone, O oh God. A word, O oh God, that someone, O oh God, can look to you and run to you today, Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus, I will give you thanks, O oh God, for this day. By this thanksgiving service, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. Please be seated. Let me, on behalf of the church family and the immediate and extended family, I'm going to ask you. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, just to desist from the, the chatter. It distracts from the service, and certainly it is disrespectful to the proceedings and to the sacredness of this service. So we're going to ask you just to desist from the chatter. If you need to talk, um, you know, you can freely exit the building. We know we are a little bit tight together. Please wear your mask if you're in here. Please put your mask on whilst you're here. COVID-19 is still with us. Let me then greet all our ministers here and the immediate and extended family of our dearly departed sister Elizabeth MacDonald and to offer sincere condolences on behalf of the church family to the immediate and extended families of our sister, and certainly to the well-wishers and the community of which she was an integral part. We thank God for the life that has been lived by our sister. Certainly, we have hope for her. The Bible did say that if the earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God. And the building refers to eternal life. We have salvation through Jesus Christ. So for those who have not yet received or applied for your building, today is another such opportunity. So we thank God for the life of our sister. She was a blessed soul in the house of God. A great praiser, a great giver. Amen. And always conscious that she had a soul to be saved. And as we come to celebrate her life today, we want to do justice to the celebration. So if we're gonna sing, we're gonna sing lustily heartily as unto God, amen. If we're going to give a tribute, we're going to give it within the time constraints that's given. 
Can I tell you, most if not all of us know about Sister McDonald. So anything that you'll tell us, we know it already. But we're just giving you the opportunity at this time to make that expression. So if you're going to give that tribute, don't tell us from when she born. And of course, you have time constraints on it and the fact that we started late. It's a little overcast and we're praying that the Lord hold back the rain for us to go through this service. So please observe the timings and so forth and let us have a, a great service in the house of the Lord as we glorify God for a life that's well lived. Let me now invite Jessica McDonald, who is the granddaughter of our dearly departed sister, to read the first lesson. And they'll be followed by the tribute. The moderator will take over. We have a lectern here for those who are participating. So we ask that you we'll use this lectern for that. Jessica, please go ahead. Bible scripture will be taken from Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 to 15. As I read, to everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to sleep. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to get away schools. And a time to get us close together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get. <laughs> and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to get us away. A time to rent, and a time to cook. A time to keep silence, and a time to speak. A time to love, and a time to hate. A time to warn, and a time of peace. What prophet has he that worketh in that where he, he labored? I have seen the triple which God has given to the sons of men to be sacrificed in. He has made everything beautiful in his sight. Also, he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God made it from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatsoever God doeth, he shall be forever. Nothing can be put to him nor anything taken from him. And God went it that men sh should fear before him. Fifteen and that, that which has been is now, and that which is to be had already been, and God raised that which is past. The word of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Just want to say good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Praise the name of Jesus. Today we are here on this occasion, not in mourning as such as those who have no hope. We all know Sister Yuna, we all know Sister Matt. So we're descending our home in our Thanksgiving service. Um, the program runs as stated, and at this time you see tributes and his three-minute speech. We have Jennifer Caldis, Virgin Vidal, and Gwendolyn Hewitt. We'll come in 
this call and it's not come back. So you know where you call and you come. But this time we have Jennifer and Shall we praise the Lord?
think you care about Sister Yuna, Sister Ma. A faithful, loving sister of New Life of Pastor in church. Let me tell you something. You can tell the sister you love it. And she's a dancer, she's a singer, she's a happy member of the New Life of Pastor in church. You gave her so many things. Let me tell you something. Sister Yuna took sick one Sunday night. We have night service. They took her to the doctor. The doctor said that she must stop jumping church. <laughs> Sister Yuna said, Doctor, don't know three. Doctor, don't know four, you only know three. When Sister Yuna come back, that's the time she jumped. Sister Yuna have a unique way of playing the tambourine at her feet. I don't know how she do it. But she knocked the tambourine and she knocked her two feet together. She's a happy, happy sister. And we dearly miss her. Because, you know, when Sister Yuna went to walk, everybody moved from Peace River to church. And she and Sister Queen is the two first members of Sunday school. When I said, Sister Yuna, how you come? I need dear. You know what? I said, I was so sorry. But where have you come? And sometimes she got a drive late, you know, when she got down sick. But she used to walk it from Peace River to church. She's a faithful, faithful member. She loves the Lord. She sings for the Lord. Sister Yuna said, when we come to church, it was not played Daddy House. That was her, that was Sister Yuna. She loved to see people praising God. There is so much because of time. I'm just going to ask you to help me to sing this song here. I have to sing something because Sister Yuna was a singer. Praise the Lord Jesus. There's a land beyond the river.
one female power tribute. At this time, we'll have the New Testament Church of God's Banana Ground, which will be followed by Sharina Kakandi. She's a reading for Sharona Kakandi's granddaughter. So you'll come at this time. Banana Ground will be And Sharina,
Ms. Hymanji. We move on and now we have the tributes, another set of tributes and if you look on your program, it says not three minutes this time, but two minutes. Praise the name of Jesus. So at this time, we will have the Olive Tree Church of God Peace River and after that, our deacon merchant, a brother, will come. Praise the name of Jesus. Olive Tree.
praise the Lord, everyone. We praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, Jesus. I think everything that operates have a right to praise the Lord. This afternoon, I just want to greet every one of you. And I have a song that I would like to sing that have three verses. But out of that three verses of song, I just want to look two. And I just want to use the other verse just to say thanks to all of you who let me feel the way I feel right now. I just want to say thanks to the community, Jayu community, Peace River, Banana Ground, Broomway, Thompson Town, and all the places that make I feel happy like the way I feel this afternoon. You know, he tells me that it pays to serve Jesus. And another thing, it pays to live good. If my sister never lived good, and if my sister never used to love to sing in this church, and this is an activity at different, different places. This moment would not be the way it is right now. So thanks and we are for me to read from it. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise Jesus. Don't let me leave
Good afternoon, everyone. I am Sister Yuna, great great grand granddaughter. And she always wants me to sing a song for her, and I am here to sing one. Set on my heart.
that there's somebody to fill this open trivia. The Good afternoon, everyone. We are here this afternoon as the nieces of Sayuna, daughters of Ruby, her sister that she followed one year ago. No, Sister Yuna, don't feel any way so much, was Mama's favorite sister. I always say that. And whenever they came to Veer, Diana and Tona, Mitchell told it was just a beauty to listen to them. When Uncle Cliffy came, Uncle John, Uncle Slade, Dasa, Yuna, Samaj, they spoke about their childhood, growing up in Peace River. They spoke about Granny, Greta and her husband, and how Master Lee, how we treated them. And the sound key would have to come out. One thing they did, they had to say, so if you hear the nieces and nephews, they were a singing, happy, humble family. Mm -hmm. And Mama shared the story with me. Grand Bertha did never ever see her being pregnant, and she has nine children. Because of what happened in Sayuna. She said, this is my mother. I don't want to ever disrespect her, but I'm not Sayuna. Sayuma was just a homeless person. All you would get from her is a smile. And she would say, Sir Ruby, we come far. And then the sounding would be home. And they would be singing and sharing their mother's favorite self. Accept his great love and let it come true. But we're not here this afternoon to share that one. Patsy is going to do the honors and we're just going to follow. Bless the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's life. Could call the tears that have fallen. It seems like an ocean.
Praise God, everyone. They didn't know today would be your last That I have to say goodbye to you so fast I'm so numb, I can't feel anymore Pray you just walk right through that
currently, as I know, is she's no longer here on the Growing up, she was always there. Smiling, bringing us good, good up, young, dreadful, here, but most importantly for me, the mango. She always takes mango, big, big mango, and she always takes our mother. And she always says, Sister Will, this is for the children. Let's let them eat. We don't have to share. And we love that. This is a lady of the world. A caring mother, aunt, and friend. Our mother went to church and teaches us when we were young. And we were never allowed to leave our way. Both her and her late husband would visit her and she was always a good time because of this many mama had someone to talk to, so we have children for some three times a day. My heart breaks the life of this selfless lady. I remember the last time I saw her. She was at my mother's studio room. And her two main concerns were they did not have any state back to her and go back and forth clean and clean like they were being made. Which made me really wonder. I said to her, this is not why you think that's going to be enough. And she said to me, this is what I've never liked me. And we are eating and drinking our children on the side of the street. So I'm speaking with her. And I said to her, no, this is not. This is what I've never liked me to be here. You are on the road. We know that and you know that. This is what I would prefer if you take a seat inside where everyone will be able to get out and do what I say. And she said, I have to do with another medicine. You don't have to do it. What you have to do is go back inside, sit on the bed, and be comfortable. That's what I would do. That's what we're trying to do. So then I have to run the brakes to know that my school system now is no longer with her. She touched the lives of so many people and brought such happiness. I will always have strong memories of her and those memories I will treasure forever. When you are with us physically, you are here with us in my heart. And you will always and I say it because I speak for my sister and my other sisters who will not be able to make it in your life. You will always be in our heart. A wonderful heart. A heart of us to be gone because you are not here. You have always been a friend. A true, wonderful friend. An aunt and a wonderful mother. Sister Ma, you may have lost you. But your time spent with us was valuable. We treasured it. You were an important part of it. And we will miss you forever. Go with God. Because I know He has a way to you. Your place in heaven is prepared. To the children and grandchildren who are left behind, I say, go more. Be happy. She's gone on to be from maker, where he is gladly humbled in her. The life she raised on her has opened a place for her. So be comforted, knowing that you are no prior and you are all in your son. Sister Mark, may your soul rest in perpetual peace. Thank you.
in my early teenage years, those very pivotal years of my life. Um, my father passed away when I was 11 years old. And Sister Mac was always there. You know, James 1 and 27 says that pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So when I met Sister Mac, I did not know this verse. I had not yet met this verse. But when I met the verse, I knew that Sister Mac had always been practicing pure religion. So my father died when I was 11 years old, as I said before, and he left behind four small children. Um, I was the oldest, but in fact there are two of us who were 11 years old, one was uh, six years old, and my little sister was three years old at the time. We were four. When I tell you very poor, we were four. The first thing that really endeared Sister Mac to my heart, it is imprinted so indelibly in my heart that I will never ever forget. It was raining days on end. I know some of us from Banana Road and Pittsburgh don't know how it rained when it rained. And one day during the heavy rains, I heard Sister Mac's voice. She came to the house and I looked out the window. She was soaked with rain, soaked from head to foot. And she had a big bundle of wood on her head. And I know Pastor said everybody, everybody know Sister Mac, but I'm sure y'all don't know this, so I'm going to lay claim to this. Um, she was so from head to foot. She had a huge bundle of wood on her, her head. And about two or three of her children, I don't remember which ones, but they were with her, also soaked with food on their head. And I heard Sister Mac say to my mother, Sister Wells, oh, it's like this happened yesterday. Sister Wells, Uncle Louis said, let me make sure you have food because you have two teenage girls and you don't want them to go to school for food. I, I tell you, I am married. And I don't think that my husband could ask me to do that. Sister, Uncle Louis, by the way, was her husband. So I don't think my husband could ask me to do something so unreasonable and I comply. But Sister Mac humbly and obediently put a bundle of wood on her head and took her three children, two or three, I don't remember now, because that was a long time ago. And she obeyed her husband and she brought food. I'll tell you, through the years, through those, how many ever, how many ever, my father died in 1971, so you have an idea. I have not been able to get that out of my mind. I have been able to get it out of my head, and I will never be able to get it out of my heart. You know, over the years, Sister Mac has prayed with us. She has prayed for us. She has encouraged us. She has loved on us. And no other person that I know outside of my family, and many inside of my family as well, has not been able to accomplish in us, my, my siblings and me, what Sister Mac has been able to accomplish. So, you know, I take an example from her. Whenever I, I'm asked to do something unreasonable, something that I think is unreasonable, I think about her. She comes to my mind. And I, I, I strive to be like her. I strive to be obedient like her, to be humble like her. I strive to love like her. Because it's only when we love that we can truly practice pure religion. Honey, I was just trying to find words to describe her, and I, I can come up with it. So I went to the Word of God because everything we need is there. And I came into Proverbs 31. Because, and for me, Sister Matt is the epitome of Proverbs 31. She must have been the woman that they were describing. She's virtuous, more valuable than who is. Her husband's heart trusted her. She worked willingly with her hands, bringing food from afar. She rose up early and made sure the household had food. And not only her household, but her distant neighbors like me. She thought of every honest way to make a living for her children. 
She stretched over her hand to the poor and needy, even when she herself was in need. She was clothed with strength and honor and always rejoiced. She was wise and kind and knew not an idle moment. And we, her children, and me, and all the other children that she adopted along the way, we rise up and we call her blessed because she is blessed. She excelled in virtue and she feared the Lord and so she has been praised. Her own words have praised her. Just on a possible fight, she finished her course. She kept the faith and henceforth there's a crown of righteousness laid up for her which the Lord shall give to her. I know that her soul is resting in peace. There's no doubt about that. Nobody here can deny that. And for that, I give the Lord that. So, Sister Matt, you're in God's hands, and you will always and forever be in our hearts. We love you, and may your soul eternally rest in peace.
Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to read a tribute and then the children will do their selection. This tribute, oh, this tribute is from the Powell family, Bishop Wilson R. Powell. First, I must give my sincere condolences to the bereaved family, Louise, Vernon, Evelyn, and others. I do give this tribute on behalf of my family, Olive, now deceased, Davina, David, Marie, Jonah, and Isabella. May you all be comforted by the knowledge that your mother is now at rest with the Lord. She is resting from her labor, and her work will follow her. The scripture declares that blessed is the dead that die in the Lord. Henceforth, says the Spirit, they rest from their labor, and they work with you. Follow them. I have given this tribute today with the consciousness of my wife, Olive, now deceased, because it was she who introduced me to this family about 15 years ago. We do live in the United Kingdom, but predominantly visit Jamaica, the land we love. It's true, Louise, Terry, and Robert that our family became acquainted. Let's say Jamaica as a national has had a very bad reputation. We do hear of things that are bad and not being done well. But today, I can say boldly that Jamaica has much that it can be proud of. It's not in the Prime Minister's office, but I can say that gold is to be found in Peace River, Jamaica. Today, we are paying tribute to the lady that may not be known in our office in our country, but she's known to heaven. Her name is clean, caring, dignified, honest, without any infringement from the law. The scripture said, such person, heavenly treasure in her earthly vessel. She, Mistress McDonald, Miss Yuna, is Jamaica gold of which we all stand tall in dignified manner because we know this lady and her character is impeccable. Love you and may your soul rest in peace.
Somebody give God a praise in this house. Somebody magnify the Lord. With a star word like that that we come to celebrate this evening, then we can know that God is indeed the Lord of the praise. Somebody shout, Hallelujah. My condolences to the family. My name is Roman Bonzo, chaplain at the Audrey E. Williams Funeral Services. And so, as I stand here this evening, I want to say to persons love who you see, share the love. Mothers are the glue that holds the family together. When we lose a mother, sometimes it seems like the family gets disarrayed and all things happen. But I say to persons, Make sure you love who you have around you now. There are persons who don't love their mother because of some things that happened years ago. But don't come to the funeral and say, Mama, I didn't love you. And you have some hypocrite now, let me ask you, who comes at the funeral room and say, the one of you, Mama, I'm bad and I said, Did you keep your eye open one more day? When her eye was home, did you love her? Keep her eye. But then come to the funeral, come to the same one, son. Amen. Glory to God. Years ago when I lost my mother, this song comforted me and I want to sing this song just to comfort somebody today. They are
that she wouldn't pull the cutlass out of my foot. And my mother get a donkey and put me on the donkey with the cutlass and go to the town at the health center. And somebody just come on and say to him, Jesus, let me see it. And by the way, for that amount. And my mother began to cry, but she still take me to the hospital. And I love my mother. And let me tell you something, when my mother was in the hospital for two weeks, all of us visit her, we never left her. And let me tell you something, my mother look at me, and she said, Evelyn, I beg you for holy peace in Jesus' name. I don't know why my mother said that, but she look at me and she said, who are the peace in Jesus' name? And let me tell you something. I glad my mother didn't tell me to hold the peace because a lot of things could have happened. But I hold the peace. And today, I feel proud of what's taking place here. And my last quotation is to all of you in here that have a mother. All of you that have a mother, those that have no mother, you are out of this. All of you that have a mother, a writer once said, a mother take care of 10 children, but in return, the 10 children could not take care of the one mother. Don't let that reach you today, God bless you.
not God. Amen. I'll be reading in your hearing from the book of First Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 15 to 18. And it says, For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Father, we thank you for the written word. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will visit this congregation in a very special way. Lord, call us to reverence you even now, knowing that your presence is with us. Speak a word of comfort, of deliverance, and of victory to your people. Give us ears to hear, hearts to understand, and a mind, great God, to continue to trot this road of life doing so in an appropriate way that at the end of all days you will be pleased with us. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise right now as we say thanks for being with us and for the life of our sister. In Jesus' name, Amen. I don't expect to be too long before you because there are so many distractions even now. But nonetheless, amen, I'll just say to you that there is an assurance, there is a comfort, and there is a reward for the saints of God. Amen. I want to provoke those who are not yet saved, who have not yet given their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. To cause you to understand that there is an assurance. Our sister has received or had received an assurance, the comfort and the reward of the faith. Can I just ask one of our ushers to just go to this corridor here and find out what's happening over here? I can't imagine that people would come to a funeral service of such a woman and, and behave so rauntously and in discipline. So we'll just find out what's happening here. Amen. I am certain that, that Sister Yuna, Sister Elizabeth, would not be satisfied with that kind of attitude there. She was not that type of woman. So we'll just find out what's happening and just ask her to tone down for us so that we can move forward and hear from the Lord. Amen. Hear what the word says to us. Now, my brother, sister, and friend gathered here today. I, I want to say to us that the, the restoration, the regeneration, and the bringing back of mankind into a celestial fellowship and a divine relationship with God is, is the best thing that could happen to man who was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Amen. The best thing that could happen in your life and mine is to get back or reestablish fellowship and relationship with God. Because that's where we came from. Adam had a unique fellowship and relationship with God. And God would converse with him and the rest of us. But over time and incidences, man has lost the relationship with God. It is evident that he has even lost respect for God. Amen. Lost respect for the house of God. Lost respect for God. And even lost respect for himself. Because if the Bible tells us that we are created in his image and expressed in his likeness, 
And then if I am created like God, and I look like God, I want to treat myself as coming from God. I want to treat others, amen, as, as, as images of God too. Praise God. So it stands to reason and it's evident that we have lost sight of God. We have lost respect for God. We have lost respect for ourselves inherently. Because once we lose the understanding and the knowledge that we are created in His image, we will live like God. Oh, you're not hearing me here today. The reason we're having so much challenges in our world, and in particular in our country, is because our nation has lost sight of God. When you lose sight of God, you lose direction. And no politician, no man, no party can ever bring that back to us. It's an individual understanding that I have moved from God. I have lost relationship with God. I have lost fellowship with God. And I believe many mothers are turning in their graves because the type of boy that they raised broke out. The daughter that they sacrificed for. And I've heard how Sister Julia has made sacrifice. Amen for bringing up her children. I, and I have no doubt. I've had, amen, for a very brief period, had uh, discourse, dialogue, she has spoken to me about anything. Amen. Mothers have labored to train their children in the fear and knowledge of God. And oftentimes it's a disgrace and a dishonor to mother the way children turn out as if they were not trained, as if they were not come from us. I'm going to talk to you here today. And you can't stone me. Amen. Amen. I'm a reality preacher. The point is, if mother has the assurance, the comfort, and is looking for a reward from God, then offspring in like manner should be in the same capacity. Not a similar capacity, but the same capacity. Rasta man pick their rasta. And the real rasta live up full too. The real one of them put some away hypocrite Christian fishing. Because they believe in righteousness. And they live righteously. Amen. Muslim man pick me a Muslim. Every midday or whatever time they bow down on their mat and they, they pray to their Allah and the rest of it. Hallelujah. Why then are not Christian parents producing Christian children according to how they train them? It's a question that has no simple answer. It's a complex situation. Simply because in our type of family, there is given a type of freedom to comply or not to comply. And it gets worse today. Because in the day when I was a boy growing up, there was only compliance. Mm -hmm. yes. Mother says something, boy, put on your clothes to go to church. Your belly are hot, your head are hot, all part of you are hot, go to church, you are gone. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There is only compliance. But as we move further and 
world of Hong Kong. The principles that we should hold, the standards that we should hold, the things that we should require of our children, amen, it becomes far from them because we ourselves have lost sight and have lost vision. Hallelujah. Recently, my daughter called me and she said, Daddy, I want you to talk to Kaylee for me because she's not behaving herself and the rest of it. So I said, hold on, let me ask you one question. Did you behave yourself when I was your father? When I was bringing you up? She said, yes, Daddy. I said, why then did you behave yourself? She said, well, I don't know of reasons, Daddy. Because if we didn't comply, <laughs> there were repercussions. And we couldn't talk back to you. So I said, well, you had training. So what has changed? She said, well, my daughter, everything I say, she has an argument. She has a recourse. Amen. And all them American fit them. Come on here. Them right to that stadium boy. And so if there is not the decision and the determination to train them, they'll get out of hand. I said to her, well, since I train you, go train your victim. Hello, someone. The point I want to make to you, when I heard our esteemed counselor made reference and he alluded to the point, he said, keep this one in church. Oh, hallelujah. Keep this one in church. Because obviously he sees godly potential. He sees what that child can produce if it is trained and kept on the straight and narrow path. The challenge now is to the parent of this child to ensure that if you have lost sight of God, come back and find me. If you have lost vision of God, oh hallelujah, find God wherever he is. Because if you don't find God, you and I can't impact the next generation. This is the challenge that we've been having in our world, in our country, amen, and even in our churches. We are not passing on the legacy or transferring that which we have effectively so that the next generation will receive the assurance, the comfort, and the reward of the saints. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. We pay scant regard to the word of God. And we give credence to all that is happening in the world. We don't insist anymore that children come to Sunday school, Sabbath school, or whichever school it is. Amen. We don't insist anymore, hallelujah, that they do that which is right. Whilst I was training my children, if you ever come home with a pencil, that they never give you. God help you. You better go back to school. Our dash it will be for this age. Come on here. But there is no accountability. Oh, there is no calling to account. Amen. Children, back chat you. And when they come out and roll you off, you kill them. You never train them again. Yeah. But when they come and roll you, they shame you. And you box them, you kick them, you abuse them, you do everything. When the training did not happen at all. We compromise. Hallelujah. With 
the actions and attitudes that are inappropriate and incorrect. And so the next generation is void of capacity for God. The next generation does not want God. They want to go to Millennium by its cartel. But there is a millennium. Who? We must get back to the place. Hallelujah. Where our children, Amen, knows the word of God. Know what the Bible says. Know what is required of them. Know what God has said. And know the type of life to live if you are going to be accepted in the law. The Bible tells me, and whether you believe it or not, that hell has a large this mode. Hell never, never was something before. Hell stretch out itself. Hell has a large this mode. Simply because man has moved away from God. But hear what the book of Revelation 14 verse 13 says. After you have lived your life and done all that you want according to your thinking, according to your liking, amen, you have been there, done that, amen, the bling bling and the thinking, come on here. Hear what the Bible says. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right. This is in the Apocalypse where John is getting revelation from God. He said, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Amen. So once you reestablish the relationship with God, all when you're dead, you're blessed. Hello, someone. Why is you living your best? What oh, hallelujah. I wish somebody heard me here today. Hallelujah. While you're living in this life, you're blessed. While you're doing your business, you're blessed. While you're laying down to sleep, you're blessed. While you're in the company of wicked people, you're blessed. Because no weapon that's found against you shall prosper. Anywhere you are, why is there a connection to God and a relationship established with Almighty God? You're blessed. Hallelujah. And we some blessed people in here will open the mouth and give God some praise. Hallelujah. If God has brought the back into fellowship and relationship with him. Tell the world and let the world know that you are a God picking it. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. Oh, glory be to God. Pastor, I'm not ashamed to say that I am a one burner. Hello here, somebody. One man, one wife. The same wife for 42 years. Hello, somebody. All the cause of Almighty God. If he hadn't transformed my life, if he hadn't changed me, then I would have Jacqueline, Susan, Jimmy, Caroline, in a measure, meant prior to, that God requires holiness, God requires righteousness, because we are made in his image and life. So blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. So thanks for the yeah. They rest from their labor, and their works do follow them. Hallelujah. Sister Yuna's work is, is following her today because she has done some righteous work. Some holy work. If you are bad mind against me, you can't stop me, because I will be blessed again. Yes, I will be blessed again. Are you here with me? Oh, hallelujah to Jesus. If I pray, people can't stop me. Wicked people can't stop me. Hello, here somebody. Sometimes we get afraid. 
when people say things to us, we get afraid. We forget that we are instruments of God's peace. We forget that we are connected to God. And we get afraid, amen, because of this, the, the talk of the devil. I often tell the saints in this church, there was a mother woman living right in front of my house whilst I was a boy. And I'm going to tell you too, was not yet saved, but God had me on his mind. Hallelujah to Jesus. Oh glory. Boys used to pass her house and throw stone on the top of her, her building. And because I'm always at my gate, she would come out and she said, Cheer bus boy. Cheer bus boy. I said, Mother, is not me enough. Is the boys passing and throwing? She never want to hear that. Long story short, this time the boy then threw some big stone, apparently dropped through a roof. Mother came out as often and saw me again. And she said, Cheer bus boy. I'll give you a nine year for them. But I heard the word of God say, The way God has fought against it. And every one that rises up against you in judgment. Because even as a boy, I was taught to read my Bible and I knew all of this. I looked at mother and said, Mother, I'll give you a drink. Amen. And as a little boy, hallelujah, void of the great knowledge of God, but yet had some knowledge of him, I said to mother, I give you a tree. Come on here. Within three days, I see the hearse drive up. And they take mother, I'm bringing a hearse, I'm gone with her. Mother dead within three days. Come on here, somebody. What am I saying to you here? Hallelujah to Jesus. If you are born again, the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you have God on your side, oh glory be to God. You're blessed. You have a reward. You have a comfort. You have an assurance, oh glory to God, that when Jesus shall put in his appearance, you shall be caught up together with him. Somebody give God a gift. And join here, here's of God, and join here with Jesus Christ. And certainly, once we have become hearers of God and join here with Jesus Christ, anything that God has is for us. I wish somebody heard me here today. Hallelujah. If you are here of your parents, and join here with your brothers and sisters. Anything that your parents have, amen, is for you. It's for the family. It's for those, amen, the next generation. Glory to God. So the Bible tells us, amen, that we are here and joined here with Jesus. Now, because we are here and joined here with Jesus, the book of Romans tells us, for whom he did for you. He knew us and predestinated us, brought us into a position of acceptance where we can become sons of God. Hallelujah. You can't be here of somebody and then know you. You can't be here to somebody and you don't know them. Hallelujah. The proper application of being an here is to have a relationship with such a person. Hallelujah. Whether your auntie, cousin, brother, sister, amen, you have to become here by relationship. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the true sense. So God himself, who have begotten us in Christ Jesus, through the gift of salvation, have brought us into a place and position whereby everything he has belongs to us. That's why he said to us, if you shall ask anything in my name, believe it, you shall receive it. Hallelujah. Many of us have asked our parents for many and various things. 
and according to their ability and capacity, they gave it to us. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Now there are some things we don't have to ask God for. But there are other things that we have to ask Him for. None of us here have asked God yet. I don't believe. Give me some oxygen today. Let me continue for the day. Some of you don't even remember that you're breathing. It's no longer talk you remember. Hello. You take breathing for granted as a natural propensity of the human action. None of us have asked him for ear. Amen. None of us have asked him. Amen. To, to, to give us of his life. Even if you ask him, you're not going to ask him for that. Because he gives it and takes it when, he, when he's ready. Even when you're not ready. And God says time. You can't do anything but go. So you don't need not to ask him for that. Because he gives to us naturally. Hallelujah. The point is, amen, he gives naturally to us what is for us to take it. Because he gives life and breath naturally to us. And some people take it from themselves. They commit suicide. Are you with me? The point I am trying to make to you, my brother, sister, is that if God has given you breath and life and time, he has given you for the sole purpose for you to be conformed to his image and receive the assurance, the comfort, and the reward of the saints. Time on earth is not to get a wealth. Some don't want you that. Because you're in hot pursuit of riches. Whether legally or illegally. Some want get rich so people and overnight that they start scaring people to get it. Oh, you're not hearing it. Hallelujah to Jesus. If you're here, stop it. Hello. Some people want to get rich overnight so badly. Amen. That they are the ones who open the gambling shop. But apparently they didn't understand or hear that the word says gambling. It never said winning. <laughs> it says gambling. So everything you do there is a gamble. Hello. And you lose more than all you win. Yes. Oh, you don't have to tell me. No. Amen. I used to gamble too. But since Jesus passed by, since Jesus passed by, let me give you one more testimony. Amen. And just finish up this part and wrap up and we go to the very I remember esteemed counselor as a young man. In 1980, 81, joined the military a year ago. 81 was still a young man. But this young man, and if God never take it out of me, amen, I would still be doing that. But thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God for Calvary. Thank God for salvation. I was one man who loved racers. Love has raising God to bed. Hello, Sabbath. I never used to win, but I love the gaming. So I used to buy. And let me tell you, on a Saturday, my wife can't call if you know me. Hello. Me ride hard from morning till night. Every race me I ride hard. When the day done, me wet. Wetter than the jacket. Come me a jacket for every horse in race. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. So they are right hearts and right hearts. The Spirit of God spoke to me and convicted my heart. And I decided to say, I'm going to get baptized this Sunday. So I said, all right, God, since we are baptized Sunday, we are going to last thing Saturday. <laughs> Hello, friends. We don't know me one of the last. We are going to last thing Saturday. So, something said to me, by the house then, by them street, we don't place, we never, we buy them every whole house for the buy. First never do that. And let me tell you, from the gate home, we are right house. 
heavy hearts we ride with. We never win yet. Never baptize tomorrow. It's in every life. A heavy heart we jump up. It's a winner. When it comes nine gone already. And when it comes to race ten, a winner still. So when we go collect the packet fat, Say not say to me, say, no matter what you're No matter what tomorrow. Try out one more next Saturday. Because since you win for me, you will have win again. Mr. Say that I don't think you can trick me. Hello. Some of us will just suck on to see it and then it can't do it. We don't do anything he said. Hello, somebody. Mr. Say that we don't trick you, know. You are baptized tomorrow. Brethren and friends, I pack up the whole line money in my pocket. I'm going to write down my baptism and pull and baptize the money too. <laughs>
from our throne high, from our heart different color high, from our gift, who could it be but God? We are fearfully and wonderfully made. You all look for me. You all look for me. Check over quiet, look down the aisle, look the top, look the top. Oh, come on here, somebody. Look how we are beautiful and looking nice. The people who just come from monkey. I couldn't come from monkey, I'm so handsome. It was God who made me. God who made us and not we ourselves. We are its people. So the dead shall be raised in corruption and shall be changed. But then I don't believe in God. But let me say this to you. Let me suggest this to you if you don't believe in God. I would suggest to you that you do what is required now in life. Be born again. Accept Jesus Christ for salvation. And then go on to living righteousness over and God. No, if at the end of your life there is no God, you will do it. There's no baptism, there's no repentance in the grave. Because when you're dead, that's it. Hello, somebody. After death is the judgment, but the body itself knows nothing. The dead can't praise him, the dead knows nothing. Amen. Our oh, sister, you will right now what she did. First of all, she can't answer. So she won't tell you. I can't tell you. The point I am making to you is better to believe God. Trust him, walk uprightly, soberly and godly, and in the end, you recognize you're about to do all of that. You will have lost nothing. Hallelujah. But if you intend to be raised incorruptible, then you must do that. For this, this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the same which is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sin? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The Bible says the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through Jesus Christ who has brought salvation and deliverance. As I close, my brothers and sisters, I want you to recognize that this is not a failure. It's not a fallacy. It's a reality. Amen. And if you have been listening to Sister Yuna, Sister Elizabeth, you would have known that she made her calling and the election show. So henceforth, there is laid up for her a crown of righteousness. Hallelujah. All that we have done here, and I appreciate it, and don't misunderstand me, but all this that has been done, even by her family today, her legacy could have gone to waste if you have not been impacted sufficiently to desire salvation. If your life has not been impacted for the very short time she was here, she was sitting, amen, most of the time where our sister in that yellow hat used to sit. And I always like to see she was a praiser. Always some of the others sit down like them pastors in a line group. I'm coming with the guys. Hello. She would stand up and shout. And I love her for that. Any time she shouts, I have to give her hallelujah to her. Because her shout was genuine. Her shout was real. Because she gave a very credence to God to operate in her life. So all that you have done now and have said, and even for the future, 
it would be an empty, futile gesture if you have not been impacted sufficiently by mama, granny, sister, amen, neighbor, if you have not been impacted sufficiently by her life to want salvation, all that you have done in your efforts are futile. I hope I have heard your moment, but it's the reality. It's the truth. Oh, hallelujah. I remember my mother impacted my life so much as a boy. Even when my father, and I tell you permissively, my father was a man in the church. I would be in which church. He was a man in the church. And let me tell you something. He was an elder of no mean life. Once you come in a church and you fight, all you want to start feeling. <laughs> Any fat woman, my father elder. Yeah. Elder, I'm going to put you in a word. Come on here, come on. My mother was a nice fat woman. So you think you're ready to go? Make sure you're ready. <laughs> Elder put in a word. Come on now. The Elder would come home late that night. That is why you don't farm food is bad. If you are single, I say that. I don't want to have this food. Once you're single, I say that. Hallelujah. Because you don't know who is watching your life and who is emulating and who is being held or being killed by your life. That man will come in late. That night. I never heard my mother quarrel with this man one night yet. And as a boy, I used to sit up here, amen, she would know, but I would wait because she would know what the whole lady for to wait for him for. She would open the door for him and ensure that he died. I never heard her quarrel with this man one time. And I'm sure she knew. She knew. Because sometimes he would carry me when he's going. And you men, you better know how you're training your son. Come on here, somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you are broke out, don't drop them out. No. Oh, you're not talking to me. <laughs> he used to take me with him. But the man used to put me for my lap and he used to, it was so disgusting. Come on. And as we come home, he said, Mama, I'm three, but the man ain't to today. <laughs> But the point I am making, thank God for mom. She impacted my life in such a way that I got to love righteousness and holiness. The man trained me to be love for the one. But to tell you the truth, the next certain say when we married, we don't find a fat one. Next thing we <laughs> Hello. All that he had perhaps instilled in me as a boy, the promiscuity, the hypocrisy, and all the rest, because of mama, hallelujah, impacting a boy's life, telling a boy that he needs to do right. Telling a boy, amen, that he needs to be married before he goes into sexual relationship. So what did we do? We tell them we pick it up. We encourage them. We say, boy, come on my yard, and girl, come on my yard. We go and I school them and give them clearance. Hello. I'm so be done, but I've got to say. She is still in this world to love God. Love righteousness, love holiness, 
And today I'm standing here, not only because God has brought me into this position or has saved me, but I'm standing here because I listen to Mama. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I did ultimately what Mama required. And the only thing that I'm a little bit sad about is that Mama never lived to see her boy. Hello, Mama. Didn't live to see that her boy took on righteousness and holiness. Amen. And, and, and that which is the point. 42 years with the same woman. And I've never looked at a fat woman. Put it on the camera. Oh, you're not talking to me. I've never looked at another woman to say I'm going to set up an extramarital relationship. Why? Because mama said, boy, treat your wife according to the word. Sorry that my wife is not here today to testify and fail you. Amen. Amen. But we have got to remember, if you are going to get the virtue, the honesty, the righteousness, that which God requires, make sure that you listen or you have listened to Mama and carry out that which Mama required. Amen. Outside of which, hell has already enlarged its mouth and is waiting to swallow up the whosoever way. Just as our God is waiting for the whosoever, hell is waiting also for whosoever to allow themselves let me invite at this time uh, our granddaughter Terry Biggs and Yashin, is it? Yes, Yashin knows me. So, Yashiva. Well, okay, thank you. Let me invite them to come to the eulogy after which the plural tribute will take place and then there will be prayer for the time. God bless you. Thank you. Good everyone. You are the gift of the lady Elizabeth Jules Wagner. It is with sadness but great pride that I stand here this afternoon to try and summarize the life of Miss Elizabeth Wagner affectionately called Miss Yuma, a loving, caring, and peaceful woman who loved God. Amen. Her family and friends who impacted the lives of many, both near and far, and was among too many. Elizabeth Yuma Maddenal was born on August 8, 1941, in Wanstead, Florida, to mother Bertha Martin and father Tiara Smith. She had eight siblings, having three survivor brothers, Lieber, John, and Slater, and one surviving sister, Marsh. The others have been already passed on. After having her first daughter, Anne also known as Alice, she met and married her first husband, Albert. Tracy. They had six children together. Calvin, Vernon, Evelyn, Lasper, Byron, and Beverly, also called Louise. After the death of her husband, she later married Louise MacDonald and had two more children, Denzel and Julie, affectionately called Casper. She fostered many children and cared for them as her own, such as Antoinette, Ossie, Jennifer, Charity, and many others. She played a strong role as grandmother to her grandchildren, raising many, such as Diana, Cherie, Gary, 
Jessica, Daniel, she, otherwise called Bujo, and the list goes on. She instilled in us the respect for others and always encouraged us in the way of the Lord. Miss Yuna was a member of the Jude Life Apostolic Church for over 35 years. She was a farmer by profession and worked assiduously to provide for her family and would not hesitate to help those in need when she could. She was a peacemaker and often advised and tried to solve the conflict which would arise. If I could describe this unit to you in only a few words, it would be kind, loving, determined, godly, charitable, and courteous. She lived life to the fullest and wasn't afraid to show the world who she really was. It was also one of her greatest joy in life to see her children and grandchildren grow up and become successful. The wonderful thing about Miss Yuna was that she didn't just live for herself, helping others, encouraging, brightening other people's lives also brought her much joy. I have many wonderful memories of my grandmother, too many to share and not nearly enough time. But I cannot share these few special memories with you, ones that I will forever hold in my heart. My 26th birthday, Last year, my mom hosted a surprise birthday party for me, which my grandmother was a part of. As many would have seen, we danced, sing, and laugh together. On many occasions, she would draw me to the side and say, No bother from fool enough, look how God love you and um, bless you. No bother look out God. Amen. Miss Elizabeth MacDonald leaves behind nine children, 45 grandchildren, 68 great-grandchildren great, great and 21 great-great-grandchildren, other relatives, and a host of friends. In closing, we want to thank you all once again for being here today with myself and my family as we prepare to say goodbye to Elizabeth McDonald. All of the support, encouragement, and words of comfort over the past month will always be remembered. We want to say goodbye to you, Mama. You were such a special person to so many, and your legacy will live on in the beautiful memories which you leave for all of us. We will always love and remember you. Thank you.
All right, Father, in Jesus' name, we present the family of all the fathers, Sister Elizabeth MacDonald, to you. Great God, she was a disciplined woman. She was a woman of integrity, of great character, and of sound mind and sound deportment and demeanor. We ask in the name of Jesus that that which she has imparted continue to impact the family in such a way that they too, Lord, will be desirous of receiving the assurance, the comfort, and the reward of the same. I pray, God, that you will lay your hand of mercy, love, and grace upon them. I pray that you will let peace prevail. And sometimes it is at this time when there is bereavement that there can be tension. So we pray in the name of Jesus that you visit this family with your peace, with your love. Visit them with salvation, visit with deliverance, visit with your blessing. Lord, there are so many great grands and grands and children and family members here today. We pray, God, that, Lord, you will let their light shine, even as they have been impacted. Let their light shine before me, that the words of God and the seen that have been imparted in them, and others will come to glory by him. Bless them, do them, good Lord. Keep them in perfect health. Keep them, O oh God Almighty, O oh Father, in your will and in your way. Save them for your name's sake. And have your will and way before you. In Jesus' name. And complete the pieces. We're going to be having a professional hymn. And the, the second verse, the clergy will go down followed by the family and then the general congregation. Alright? That's the all of our session. So just please be very very indulgent to just wait a while and display yourself but be ready. Throne 
Everybody, 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 everybody
to himself, the soul of our dear beloved sister, who departed his life, we therefore commit our body to the ground, ash to ash. the <laughs> It's all of yonder, in the road, it's all of yonder, in the road. They call it tag day, sir. They Mama Ting, Mama Ting. Rest in peace, Mama. Girl, go be that up straight, girl.